So as I promised in the last couple videos, I am going to be kind of redoing the rebuilding retro PC thing, which is basically where I was going to end up, end up taking machines that I got and just kind of cleaning them up and rebuilding them. And I figured I'd make a video with me doing that. So hopefully I'll be able to do that with all the other machines I get from now on, unless they're Windows XP era or newer. Um, I've got an AST Advantage over here. And if you haven't seen, if you don't know what I'm talking about, these machines... Uh, Go back and watch the last couple of videos I uploaded. That's basically where I got them and uh, testing some of them. So I'm going to be doing this one, which is the first one I tested in the last video. And that video is actually uploading right now. Not that that makes much of a difference. But anyway, uh, let's just get started. So this is a PC Partner XL by Leading Technology. Don't know who they are. Uh, probably a company that wasn't around for a very long time. It does have a model... Uh, ST3098-96A, I cannot talk, uh, that's a Seagate drive as the hard drive right here. Looks like an early IDE drive, I don't know exactly how big it is, but I do know it is a Seagate drive. We have a 5 quarter inch floppy down here, down there, and a 3 half inch floppy right here. I think that's probably a 1.44 meg, I, uh, like I said, I haven't had a chance to check. Uh, turning it around though, and looking at the side here, you can see that it's fairly decent. We've got a little battery holder right here for double A's. And one of them was leaking. And basically, I'm just going to clean that up. And it should be it should be fine, I think. And then we're going to move over to the motherboard here. Now, this is extremely dusty. And as you can see, a lot of these chips are socketed. So I'm probably not going to be washing that in the sink like I usually do um, with a lot of my other boards. I usually do that with anything newer. And it usually ends up working okay, but I'm not going to do that with this machine. Instead, I'm going to try to just take a cotton swab and clean up in there. Make it at least look a little better and not so dusty. And uh, like I said, I'm going to work on that uh, battery compartment. And then we got your riser card on this side. That does not have anything in it. And planning on putting another little slot blank over there. I was going to put a sound card in here. But I kind of didn't do that because it's got a joystick port on the back and it's got a PC speaker. So I'm not really wanting to put a sound card in this machine. I've got quite a few I could put in here, but I don't want to have to do that. Or I don't want to do that, really. Uh, just because I kind of want to leave it the way I got it. Looking at the back here, uh, let's start over here, this side. All right, guys. So right over here, we've got your uh, five pin connector for your AT keyboard. And moving to the left a little bit, we've got your parallel port and a joystick port, which is kind of interesting for this machine, and your two parallel ports, or, or your two serial ports, sorry. Moving up there, we've got a VGA 8-bit card, which I talked about in the other video, just kind of, well, I didn't even really talk about it, I just noticed it, that it was a 8-bit card instead of a 16-bit, which was a kind of, would have been, I would think, more common at this time. Maybe not, maybe their budget PC build or something. Uh, moving over there, we've got kind of a weird uh, power button thing. I don't even know how I'm going to be able to clean that because it it uh, kind of whoops, kind of doesn't come out. I don't know if I can pull that back or what I'm going to do with that, but maybe it'll pull out. I don't know. We'll see about cleaning that, though. I don't know if I'll be able to put this whole case in the sink, which is what I usually do. I put the metal part in the sink and wash it. Um, well, we'll see. And then we've got a little power supply right here that's kind of got a little cover over it. Not too not too much on this side. Maybe you can kind of see down in there. I don't know how good it will be. But you can see that there's uh, the BIOS chips are for 386 processors. It's kind of interesting. So I figure let's go ahead and start pulling it apart. I think we'll start with the... Geez, I don't know where to start with this machine. I think we'll probably start with... Uh, floppy drives or getting this front case off. I don't even know how I'll, how I'll be able to get that off. So as you can see, I pulled off the front panel and I'll go ahead and unscrew those a little bit later and get the reset button out of there and the two feet off. 
and I think this comes off too, this, this little gray piece right here. So we'll try to get that off a little bit later. So I wanted to get the floppy drives out, but it looks like I almost have to pull out the hard drive to get at that. Um, let me go ahead and pull that out really quick. All right, so we've got the Seagate drive out of here. Kind of a decent little drive, kind of cool. We'll put that over to the side over here. Whoops. And uh, let's see, what else can we get out? I don't know how to get these floppy disk drives out of here though. It looks like there's a little clip underneath here and we just got to pull on that and it comes right out. Unless there's like a screw or something. Could be. Let's check. No, no screws. Hmm. Alright, well they sort of just come right out on these little drive rails. So I'm going to set that off to the side. Maybe work on that a little bit later. I'll probably clean those off camera because I don't think it'll make a huge difference to do that on camera. All right, guys, so I did find where the processor was, uh, which is kind of interesting. Don't know how well you guys will be able to see it, but it's kind of a... Usually most 386 processors are interesting looking. It's right down there next to that cable. It's a 25 megahertz 386, which is a little slower than what I was hoping it was going to be. But it's an SX. Oh, geez, that is just... This, this floppy drive just will not come out. We'll have to take a look at that a little bit later, I guess. But uh, for now, let's uh, let's try removing the... Uh, well, I suppose we should probably try to remove the power supply. I think that's probably the best thing I could do right now. Let's zoom in on that a little bit better. Or at least this... Maybe we should... You know what? Let's remove the... Uh, I take that back. Let's remove the video card here. Cause I gotta fix that video card anyway. There's, it's missing some parts. Whoops! I don't know exactly what I mean when I get this thing out of here. There we go. Really extremely clean contacts. I don't know if you guys can see that, but they just, there's nothing on them. Decent little uh, VGA card. It says uh, AMI, so must be a uh, AMI video card. Kind of an interesting video card. There's the uh, bracket, and as as you can see now, you know what I'm talking about. So here's the bracket, and you can definitely see what I'm talking about. Uh, it does not have the screws to hold that in place. Pretty big mess of cables down here. I think it's I think it's got pretty much all integrated everything. So pretty dusty too. My hands are full of dust right now. Got the, uh, there's the IDE cable. It looks to be an IDE cable. And sent inside. Not a lot of dust on this side of the board. Uh, compared to the other side here. But uh, we'll clean that up and you probably won't even be able to tell. <laughs> probably actually will be able to tell because I'm not that good at cleaning these machines up. I'm not. Probably not going to do too good of a job here. So we've got the screws out on this side for this bracket that runs a brace that runs across here. Let's see if I can get this other side. Kind of just slowly doing this. And I should just be able to go right over here, grab that screw, and it will. I just pull up on that. There we go. And once again, guys, look at that. Look at that. Uh, look at the gold or the contacts on there. They're just amazing. Extremely shiny. And it's uh, kind of held together by... Whoops, you, what is with me? I can't even put this thing right on the camera. Uh, looks like there's cables connecting that in there. Ribbon cables. Kind of interesting. Interesting little design. But here is the base motherboard. So I really tore it down to pretty much the base motherboard, like I said machine down to its base components here but I think before we do anything else I want to try to get that power supply out of there so just unscrew that here and this should just slide right up 
So this should just slide right up. There we go. And you have uh, your main power supply unit, which is probably still holding some sort of an electric charge. There it is. Oops, geez, what is with me? I keep dropping things. There's the uh, there's the better look at it. As you can see. And it looks like looks like the scrap panel stuff can just come right out. Hey guys, so here is the front panel. Still a little water on it, so I gotta let it dry before I can put it on. And it's definitely gonna be a while before I put it on anyway. I've gotta clean this thing uh, there. But this right here, as you can see, I've, I've taken off all of them, and, and they just kind of come on screw here. You can kind of. I don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah, you can. A couple little screws on the reset button and the little feet there at the bottom. Like I said, still a little wet, so I'm just gonna wait a little while until it dries off. And this is hopefully the monitor I'll be able to use for that. That is a uh, Packard Bell monitor, and it seems to really fit on top of here. So we'll try to use that. But uh, I'll get right back to you guys whenever I get something else done here. Uh, don't know what I'm going to clean next. It's either going to be the case or the motherboard. Um, or maybe a floppy drive or something. But uh, I've yet to kind of do anything with those. So anyway, I'll uh, get right back to you guys whenever I uh, have an update. Alrighty guys, so as you can see, I've blown off the case with, or blown off the motherboard with the, uh, the main board with uh, air compressor, and just kind of cleaned up some of the little chips in the socket for, it looks like would probably be a co-processor. Um, anyway, let's see here, what was I going to say? Oh, I got the uh, front case finished up, as you saw, the front panel, and that'll go on the case when I'm finished here. And then I've got to get the uh, power supply cleaned up. Not too dirty, though. And next will be the uh, floppy drives. But I'll go ahead and show you guys what the case looks like. So, what the uh, metal part of the case looks like. I do have to clean it up a little bit. Yeah, there's still some water in it. But it, it cleaned up pretty well. Like, like you can kind of see down there, there's some little water spots. That's where the speaker was. It was held in with some sort of a glue. And uh, luckily, I scraped it all off. There's the uh, back of the machine. So, it'll be a decent little repair once I get it all finished. And uh, the next biggest piece of metal that I have to clean is this right here. Because this is pretty dirty, and this is the top cover. But hopefully that won't be, whoops, that won't be too hard to do. That's weird. Okay. But uh, I'll get back to you guys when I get the motherboard seated in. And, uh, well, actually, when I probably next when I clean up the uh, floppy drives. I'll uh, get right back to you guys. Okay, guys, so I think it looks quite a bit better. Um, it's all put back in the case now. The motherboard's put in there. I've got the battery holder and the speaker put in there. Speaker's plugged in. Battery holder's plugged in. I got to just put some double A's in there. I might try to take some vinegar and get it right around in one of them contacts just kind of clean it up a little bit i don't have any sort of a solution that'll get rid of that except for vinegar so that's what i've had the most luck with now i still gotta clean up the floppy drive and the video card needs uh, some screws to hold it on like i mentioned before and i gotta put the riser card in the power supply in and then we're gonna have a hopefully a working machine hopefully a working machine i gotta get the fan in yet too before i put the power supply in this is gonna be pretty it's a pretty uh, beat up speaker or <laughs> fan. I think the guy who owned this before me actually smoked, so it wasn't. It's uh, quite a bit dusty, quite quite dirty. And I think I hope the speaker is working. I don't know why the original owner would unplug it, or whoever repaired it or whatnot. I do have. I might have another speaker for it somewhere in here. Um, kind of a weird connector I think this will work might not though Got a lot of speakers in here 
This one would work. I think this one would work right here, actually. So if all else fails, I do have a donor speaker that I could put in there. I think I got another one, too. A lot of them have a four pin connector, but this only has two pin. So, this will work. It's got the two, two pins. So, at least I know I've got a speaker I can put in there if that one doesn't work. But, I don't think that'll be a problem. I don't think that speaker's gonna have any problems. But, who knows? You never know. And uh, here's the brackets that I'm going to use. I'm going to either try to get something similar to this guy right here, or I'll uh, just switch it out with something. There's a nice one in the back there. The only problem with that one is it's got a little number on it, so I don't know if I'll use that. But i got quite a few in here, so I'll probably find something to put in here. I'll get right back to you guys, though, whenever I finish cleaning up the probably the power supply, actually, the fan. Put that in there. I should have probably put that in there before I put the motherboard in there. But uh, once I get that done, then it'll be the floppy drives, then it'll be the hard drives, and the video card, and we should be all good then. We'll test it out and see if it still works then. But I'll get right back to you guys when I'm finished up cleaning up the fan and getting the power supply in. Back with another little update for you guys. So I uh, got the shield on the power supply and cleaned that all up. The fan is plugged in, uh, and the ground cable is connected back up again. So, I'm not going to turn it on quite yet, uh, although I could. Hmm. Yeah, I'm probably not going to turn it on right now. I'm waiting for the uh, cables to dry. Yes, I did wash the cables for the floppy drive and the uh, hard drive, uh, just because they were pretty dusty, and that's really the best way I can do it. Um, I suppose you could take some glass cleaner and wipe it off maybe, but that's not what I, uh, not what I usually do. I guess if you were going to do this, you could do whatever you really wanted to, but uh, that's just what I do. Uh, now I think I'm going to put the brackets on the back here, and uh, then I'll get to the cleaning of the floppy drives, and we'll put the video card in once that's done. And then we can put the front panel on and clean up the top, and hopefully we'll have a working machine afterward. So uh, let me just go ahead and put uh, or find one of these, either use this one or find another one like it. So I can put two of them in there. And then I'll get right back to you guys. Alrighty guys, so I don't exactly remember what I said I was going to do. I think it was uh, I was going to get some new expansion slot brackets on there. And I did actually. Uh, this is the original one that was on there. And I just kind of, I'm going to keep this one for something else. Uh, the only other one that I could find that was similar was this one right here. And the color is still a little off and they're not the same exactly. So I, you know, it does, it's not that it really matters, but I just wanted to get something that matched. And I did end up finding these two. Um, they're kind of a little weird looking. In this case, they're really shiny. But so is this one, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, but I did put two in there because I had two of them that were just kind of left over. And they're all screwed in now. Look okay. And I think I'll keep those in there because they look, they look pretty good. So that'll be a good candidate for that. And I'll just... Just probably leave it like this for now. Uh, I do have to clean the floppy drives. That's what I'll do next. And then I'll get this in there. Along with the uh, expansion. Along with the bracket. And I'll put that in the other one. Because that's where it was when I got it. So, like I said, just trying to keep this thing as most, more original than uh, anything else. So, I don't mind changing a couple of things if it, if it still adds to the kind of restoration type fact that I'm doing with these. So... I'll go ahead and uh, clean up the floppy drives, and I'll get right back to you guys. And uh, maybe then I'll put some batteries in this machine, and we'll fire it up, see if it works. So, see you in a little bit. So I figured I'd just show you guys something here. I pulled apart the 3.5 inch floppy, and this thing is just amazingly clean. I think the only thing I'm going to do right now is... Um, I should probably oil the drive up a little bit, but... Uh, this one doesn't even look like it needs it. It's really, really decent looking. As you can see, the only thing I'm probably going to do is um, clean up the heads a little bit because I don't have any cleaning discs. So, probably just do that. But it's just really clean. No dust in this thing at all. I think I'm going to just take the front cover off here and clean that. Take the button out. 
and uh, then I'll go ahead and put it in there and we'll move on to the five and a quarter inch. So I just want to make a small side note to anybody if you're going to plan on taking one of these five and a quarter inch drives apart. From what I've had experience with, and that's from my uh, Apple II Plus, and uh, this drive, and quite a few other drives even though I haven't taken them all apart, uh, if you want to take off the front faceplate, it's usually pretty hard because you've got the uh, you've got the little um, what the heck is this? <laughs> you've got the little um, lever for dropping down the uh, let's see, dropping down like I think that's the head assembly, right? Drops, yeah, basically dropping down the whole head assembly, and uh, in some cases, if you've got one that has this locking mechanism. Uh, like this one does, and I think even with some that don't have that locking mechanism, you usually have to take this thing out, take the uh, little lever out in order to get the front panel off. And I needed to get that off because it's really dirty. Um, but in my case, it had a little tiny uh, pin on there. Not really a pin, but it's more like a little ring. And it, it's really tight. It's like a clamp. And it clamps this thing down, so you want to be really careful not to make those fly anywhere. I've had that happen before, and I luckily I found it. But just a note for anybody who wants to uh, t take their five and a quarter inch drives apart, take the front panels off of them. Usually, that's what I've run into. I'm sure there's probably something different on others, but this thing is really dirty, so I had to get that off. For me, it was just a little prying, and I, it came right off. I don't know how well you guys can see that. For me, it was just a little prying, and the thing came off. And it usually has the uh, little lever has it's like kind of a semicircle, so it only goes on one way. But that's what I've run into. I don't know. Maybe some maybe yours is different. But a little tip if you're going to take one of those apart. Just figured I'd make a little video about that. But anyway, let's get back to building. So far, it's turning out pretty good. Uh, but I'll get right back to you guys once I get this drive in there, and uh, we'll go from there. Alright guys, so uh, just before I kind of show you guys what I did, I did put the 5 and a quarter inch drive back in there, and I just want to say one thing. I did say that uh, in order to get them things off, usually, or the front of them off, you usually have to take them apart and take that little clip out. Uh, but when you're putting it back in, it sometimes can be kind of hard, and I forgot to mention that. Uh, I got mine in. It took me a little while, but I got it in, so. Just so you know, if you're going to do it, it is going to take probably a little while to get on all the way. I don't know what that is. But uh, anyway, I did get the front panel on, and I think it looks pretty good. It looks a heck of a lot better than I did before. And I'm not really doing this just for cosmetic look. I'm actually trying to get this thing to function again, even though it did function before. I just want it to run a little bit better, cooled off better, so the fan's all cleaned. But it's also kind of do with cosmetic, too. I just like the way things look when they're all clean and nice. Nice looking. So, I've got to uh, put the cables back in, and then I can put the video card in, in the hard drive, and get some AA batteries, and uh, we'll see if it works. I don't have any reason to doubt that it won't work, but uh, you never know. So, I'll see you guys in a little bit when I get the cables all plugged in, and the hard drive hooked up. All right, so I think we are pretty much finished with this machine. I've just got to finish. I just got to finish up cleaning the uh, top cover, and I think we'll be all done. And it looks like it's a little bent, so I have to probably bend that back together. I don't know if you can see the sides are kind of bent out, but it looks really good. Um, I got the cables all in there. It doesn't look that good, like I said before, but it's pretty good. It's good enough. Not trying to win any beauty contests or anything. I did get new screws on the uh, floppy on the uh, VGA card there. Just pulled a bunch of these off some dead motherboards. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I don't know why I didn't think of that earlier. I might as well just pull all those off because I could use them probably. Um, the video card's hooked up. It's not all the way in. And it wouldn't go all the way in. I don't know why. I think it was because those screws are in there. But uh, I ended up actually putting the taking the screws out, putting the card in, adjusting it, and then screwing it in because it wouldn't fit otherwise uh, but I got it to fit and the floppy drives in the floppy drive should be working uh, I don't think it's broken at all it uh, it closes down clamps down 
I haven't tested either of the drives, but I know they seek, so they, they passed the seek test, so, and the computer recognizes them last time I checked. But, uh, 